the balance sheet title is something different from the income statement title whenever we discussed income statement we noticed that the title of trading account is trading account for the year ended or for the year ending p and l account also it titled as profit and loss account for the year ended or for the year ending because we are preparing income statement trading account and total loss account at the end of the accounting period whereas in the case of balance sheet balance sheet is a financial position on a particular day on a particular date so that is why the, the heading or the caption of the balance sheet is balance sheet as on or balance sheet as at in the income statement we are preparing the statement for the last one year particulars whereas in the case of balance sheet balance sheet we used to record assets and liabilities on a particular date that will be at the end of the accounting period may 31st december or 31st march like that so you can see here in the format left hand side is liabilities and right hand side assets so liabilities amount assets amount always remember that balance sheet is only a statement showing the financial position so we are required to list out assets and liabilities left hand side liabilities and right hand side assets we can see liability side first item capital add net profit for as per carried forward from the total loss account add interest on capital less drawings and if there is any interest on drawings that also will be deducted and the net figure will be showing on outer column of liability side of the balance sheet the next one long term loans and advances debentures or if there is any any other kind of long term loans or advances in any other form that will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet the next uh, examples you can see all these are short term assets all these are current assets sorry current liabilities all these are current liabilities or short term liabilities sundry creditors bank overdraft bills payable and if there is any short term loans or any other advances that will also be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet then if you check asset side first at we can say goodwill if any then the next one is fixed assets like land buildings motor vehicle furniture and fixtures plant and machinery all these are fixed assets then after fixed assets we are required to write we are required to see record current assets or short term assets like sundry debtors investments cash in hand cash at bank bills receivable and closing stock then after recording all the all the liabilities and assets all the long term liabilities short term liabilities and fixed assets and short term assets then we are required to add both sides liability side and asset side one of the important feature of balance sheet is that it must tally the liability side and asset side must be must tally so that means that means it must be equal suppose we have 
100 rupees liability side there will be 100 rupees on the asset side so there will be no balancing figure for the balance sheet after preparing the balance sheet it must tally assets is equal to or assets and the liability side must be equal so these are the formats of income statement and position statement trading account total loss account and balance sheet then while preparing the final accounts we must take into consideration the expenses and incomes for the full trading period the incomes and expenses and other items which are not treated must kept into account while preparing the trading and profit loss account and balance sheet and this is possible by passing closing and adjustment entries so those entries which are passed at the end of the accounting period are called as in order to adjust some uh, some uh, see items it will be called as uh, adjusting entries so that means see some expenses and incomes and maybe which are not recorded in the trial balance or maybe we are knowing some expenses and incomes only after the preparation of the trial balance and as per accrual concept or accrual system or mercantile system of financial accounting we are required to record all the expenses and in the incomes in the trading and profit loss account during that particular accounting period itself so we are maybe we are knowing some expenses or see incomes or some items only after the preparation of the trial balance so it is very difficult to revise this trial balance and prepare the final accounts incorporating all these uh, see expenses or incomes or those items we are knowing only after the preparation of the trial balance so in that case in order to incorporate a such and such items we are required to pass adjustment entries and we are required to adjust manually the double the dual aspect must be so as an accountant we are required to comply see manually so let let us discuss which are the common items which we are knowing after the preparation of trial balance is called as adjustments so these are the some adjustment items first one is closing stock second one outstanding expenses third one is unexpired or prepaid expenses fourth one accrued income fifth one is income received in advance sixth one depreciation then bad debts then interest on capital next item is interest on drawings the next one provision for doubtful debts 11th one provision for discount on debtors then reserve for discount on creditors the next one is deferred revenue expenditure then we can say stock destroyed by fire and the last one is goods distributed as free samples so these are the normal items coming under adjustments that means we are knowing only after the preparation of some expenses or incomes which we are knowing after the preparation of the trial balance so the list consists of list of adjustment items consists of closing stock outstanding expenses unexpired or prepaid expenses accrued income income received in advance depreciation bad debts interest on capital interest on drawings provision for doubtful debts provision for discount on debtors reserve for discount on creditors deferred revenue expenditure stock destroyed by fire 
and goods distributed as free samples. So let us examine how to pass adjustment entries and how to treat this uh, adjustments while preparing the final account. We will discuss one by one. First one is closing stock. What is closing stock? The unsold goods lying in stock at the end of the accounting period are called closing stock. For adjusting the closing stock, the following adjustment entries will be passed. The adjustment entry is stock account debtor to trading account. So closing stock means those goods lying in stock or lying in store at the end of the accounting period. Whatever, whatever stock, whatever goods lying in store at the end of the accounting period is called as closing stock. The adjustment entry for closing stock is that closing stock account debtor to trading account. Then we will discuss what will be the adjustment or what will be the twofold effect of uh, closing stock or how to treat manually this uh, uh, closing stock adjustments whenever we prepare the final accounts. The first effect is that closing stock will be shown on the asset side of the balance sheet because stock either it is opening or closing stock is always an asset so that is why closing stock will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet the second effect is that the closing stock will be shown on the credit side of the trading account so whatever goods Lying in store at the end of the accounting period is called as closing stock. Closing stock will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. So in order to reflect, in order to record the true amount of or actual amount of material consumed, closing stock will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. So always remember the treatment. This is very, very important because whenever we prepare the uh, whenever we solve the problems or prepare final accounts like trading account, PL account and balance sheet. So we have to adjust this closing, closing stock. The twofold effect is that first effect, it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. And second effect, we can say closing stock will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. The second item, adjustment item is unexpired or prepaid expenses. So we'll discuss what is unexpired or prepaid expenses. Those expenses which have been paid in advance, the benefits will be available in the, in the future are called prepaid expenses. So prepaid expenses means those expenses which are already paid but not in good. That means it is, it is paid in advance. So those expenses which are paid in advance but not expired is called as prepaid expenses. So what will be the adjustment entry? The adjustment entry is prepaid expenses account debtor to expenses account. So prepaid expenses will be debited and expenses account will be credited. Then what will be the twofold effect? The twofold effect is that Prepaid expenses will be showing on the debit side of the income statement, either on the trading account or PL account, by way of deduction from the respective expenses. So, in case see expenses paid in advance, that will be deducted from the respective expenses on the debit side of the income statement because expenses we used to always record on the debit side of the income statement either on the trading account or CEPL account so that will be detected whatever expenses paid in advance will be detected from the respective expenses the next one see prepaid expenses it is an it is an asset so prepaid expenses will be showing on the debit side of the balance sheet so these are the twofold effect. First effect, it will be the prepaid expense will be showing on the debit side of the income statement. 
either on debit side of trading or, or on debit side of PL account by a deduction, uh, deduct it from respective expenses. So for example, suppose it is salary, salary paid in advance. So salary will be showing on the debit side of the PL account. So debit side of the PL account from salary, it will be deducted. And see expenses paid in advance is an asset. So that is why see it will be showing on the debit side of uh, Sorry, it is an asset. So that is why it is showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. And one more item is there that is uh, outstanding expenses. Outstanding expenses are those expenses which are already incurred but not paid. Those expenses which are already incurred but not paid is called as outstanding expenses. The adjustment entry for outstanding expenses is that expenses account debtor to Outstanding expenses account. So this is the annual entry. The adjustment entry is expenses account debtor to outstanding expenses account. The twofold effect is that outstanding expenses will be showing on the debit side of the income statement, either on trading account or on PL account by way of addition from the respective addition to the respective expenses. The second effect is that outstanding expenses is a liability. Still we are required to pay. So that is why outstanding expenses will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet. So I, I repeat outstanding expenses means those expenses which are already engaged but not yet paid. Actually, we are supposed to pay the amount, but we are not yet paid. So it is our liability. It's our liability to pay. So the adjustment entry for outstanding expenses is expenses account debtor to outstanding expenses account. And the twofold effect is that Outstanding expenses will be showing on the debit side of the income statement because all expenses will be showing on the debit side of the income statement only, either on the debit side of the trading account or on the PL account. See, outstanding expenses will be added along with the expense, the respective expenses on the debit side of the income statement. And Expense already incurred, not paid. It's a liability. Still, the company is required to pay. It's a liability. So that is why it is showing on the liability side of the balance sheet. The fourth adjustment is accrued income. The fourth and fifth is related to income. So always remember that it will be showing on income. Will be always showing on the credit side of the PL account. So accrued income. Those incomes which have been earned but not received during the accounting period is called the accrued income. So accrued income means those incomes which are already earned but not yet received. So we are supposed to receive this income during this year but not yet received. Such incomes are called as accrued income. Then we will discuss what will be the adjustment entry. The adjustment entry for accrued income is that accrued income account debtor to income. Accrued income account debtor to income. The twofold effect is that the first effect accrued income will be showing on the credit side of the profitless account by way of addition, by way of addition to the respective income. So income will be always on the credit side of the PL account. So we can say accrued income will be showing on the credit side of the PL account by of addition to the respective income. Always remember, 
say accrued income will be added or it will be in addition to the respective income on the credit side of the PL account. The next effect, accrued income, it is an asset, still not received. We are supposed to receive, but not yet received. So it is the asset of the company, asset of the sole trader concern. So the second effect is that, see accrued income will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. The, so these are the two effects. First effect is that, Accrued income will be showing on the credits of the PL account by way of addition to the respective income. And second one is it's an asset. So that is why see accrued income will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. The next fifth adjustment item is income received in advance. Income received but not earned during the accounting period is called an income received in advance. In order to bring this item into books of account, the following adjustment entry will be made at the end of the accounting period. The adjustment entry is that income account debtor to income received in advance account. So accrued Sorry, income received in advance means those income which are not earned but received. Actually, we are not supposed to receive this income during this accounting period, but we received that income. We are supposed to receive that amount only during the next accounting period only, but we received in advance during this accounting period itself. Such income is called as income received in advance. That will be very rare situation only. Income received in advance means those income which are not earned but received in advance, received during this year. Such a, 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 see, income is called as income received in advance. So what will be the adjustment entry? The adjustment entry is that income account debtor to income received in advance account. Then we will discuss what will be the twofold effect, what will be the dual aspect or dual effect of uh, income received in advance. First one, it will be showing on the credit side of the profit and loss account by way of deduction from the respective income. Because income will be always on the credit side of the PL account. The important thing is that we have to see either addition or deduction. See here, income received in advance will be deducted. It will be deducted from the respective income. And second effect is that actually we are not supposed to receive this amount uh, during this year, but we received in advance. Actually, we are we are expecting this uh, this uh, amount during the next year on, but received in advance. So that is why it is a liability. So we can say, see, income received in advance will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet because it is received in advance. If there is any see, uh, contingency arises, we are required to return this amount because income received in advance. That is, actually we are not supposed to receive it and it is not earned. So that is why it is a liability. So the default effect is that credits out of the PL account, deduct it from the respective income. And it's a liability, then it will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet. The next common adjustment is depreciation. The term is quite familiar. Depreciation is the reduction in the value of fixed assets due to its use, wear and tear, or obsolescence when an asset is used for earning purposes. So depreciation means a gradual reduction in the value of fixed assets due to use, wear and tear, or obsolescence. So that is a loss. That is an expense to the business organization. So let us see what will be the general entry, adjustment entry. The adjustment entry is that depreciation account debtor to assets account. Depreciation is an, is an expense or we can say it's a loss. That is why depreciation is debited. And whenever depreciation arises, 
the value of fixed assets will decline. So that is why asset account creditor, because asset is always debit balance. Whenever there is a reduction, so we have to give a credit. The adjustment enter is depreciation account debtor to assets account. Then we will discuss what will be the dual aspect or what will be the two fault effect. The first effect is that it is an expense. So that is why the depreciation will be showing on the debit side of the profit and loss account. Expenses will be always on the debit side of the income statement. So depreciation will be showing on the debit side of the PL account. And second effect is that when our depreciation arises, that results in the reduction of the value of fixed assets. So that is why depreciation will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from the respective fixed assets. So from the respective fixed assets, the depreciation will be deducted. And the net figure after depreciation, we used to show on the outer column of the balance sheet, on the asset side of the balance sheet. So the twofold effect, it is an expense or loss. So depreciation will be showing on the debit side of the PL account. And whenever depreciation arises, that result in the reduction of the value of fixed assets. So that is why fixed assets we used to show on the asset side of the balance sheet. So depreciation will be deducted from the respective fixed assets on the asset side of the balance sheet. And net figure will be showing on the outer column of the balance sheet. The seventh item is bad debts. So what is bad debts? Debts which cannot be recovered or become irrecoverable, irrecoverable are called as bad debts. Debts which cannot be recovered or become irrecoverable are called as bad debts. Nowadays at the present the competitive situation, every kinds of business used to provide some sort of uh, credit facilities. No organization can insist only on cash sales. Many organizations used to provide credit sales. Whenever credit sales arises, sundry debtors will be there. And there is no guarantee that the full amount of sundry debtors we are in a position to recover. So the debt which are, the sundry debtors or debt which are not recoverable or irrecoverable are called as bad debts. So it is a loss from sundry debtors. So if there is any, uh, any debtors becomes bad, so it is a loss to the business organization. So what will be the adjustment entry, general entry? You can see the entry is bad debts account debtor. Bad debt is a loss. So that is why every, every losses, every expenses and losses will be debited. See, that is a bad debts account will be debited. And sundry debt is creditor. Because whenever sundry, sorry, bad debt arises, there will, that result in the reduction of sundry debt. Sundry debt will be an asset, always debit balance. So in order to reduce that debit, we have to go for a credit. That is why sundry debt is creditor. So the adjustment entry is that bad debts account debtor to sundry debt is account. Then what will be the twofold effect? The twofold effect is that first effect, see bad debt will be showing on the debit side of the PL account. And second one, see bad debt will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of, by way of deduction from sundry debtors. The first effect is that bad debts will be showing on the debit side of the profit and loss account. And second effect, whenever bad debts arises, that result in the reduction of good debts. So that is why in order to see, we used to show only good debt in balance sheet. So in order to record the good debt out of the total, debt, bad debt will be deducted. So bad debt will be deducted from 
sundry debt is on the asset side of the balance sheet and the balancing figure the good debt will be showing on or net, net debt or net sundry debt will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet then another item of adjustment we can say interest on capital sometimes in order to know whether the business is really earning profit or not interest on capital at a certain rate is provided so interest on capital means as the name indicates charge of interest upon the capital so we used to charge interest on capital in order to determine whether our business concern is earning a true rate of or see really earning a profit at the true rate or not interest on capital will be we used to charge so the general entry for interest on capital is interest on capital account debtor to capital account so this is the general entry interest on capital account debtor to capital account the two fold effect is that first effect it will be treated as an expense that amount which we are providing to the sole trader so that is why interest on capital will be showing on the debit side of the profit and loss account the second effect is that whenever interest on capital is there that means whenever we are providing interest on interest upon capital that result in the addition of capital so that is why second effect it will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by of addition to the capital so whenever interest on capital is there capital will be increased so capital will be used to show on the liability side of the balance sheet only so so we can say interest on cash like second effect is that see interest on capital will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by of addition to capital so these are the two fold effect of interest on capital first effect it will be showing on the debit side of the profit and loss account second effect is that interest on capital will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by of addition to the capital so this is the most important one by of addition to the capital so that means capital will increase whenever we are providing interest on capital the capital of the salt trader will automatically increase the next one is interest on drawings so what is drawing drawings means withdrawal of money or material by the proprietor for his personal use so suppose the proprietor is withdrawing money from the business for his personal use it is called as drawings so if interest on capital is allowed it is to be natural that interest on drawings should be charged from the proprietor upon the drawings so in case the business is providing interest on capital to the proprietor it is reasonable that or it is justifiable that see the business also required to charge interest upon the personal drawings of the proprietor so this is the general and re adjustment entry for interest on drawings drawings account debtor to interest on drawings account drawings account debtor to interest on drawings account the two fold effect is that interest on drawings will be showing on the credit side of the profit and loss account because interest on drawings will be treated as an income of the business because we already treated interest on capital as an expense so that is why whenever the business is charging interest on drawings from the proprietor it will be treated as an income so that is why it will be showing on the credit side of the profit and loss account the second effect is that interest on drawings will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by of deduction from capital 
So interest on drawings will be deducted from capital. But whenever there is drawings, we used to what what we used to do, we used to add this interest on drawings with the drawing, and the total drawings. That means drawings plus interest on drawings. That will be these two figures will be deducted from capital. So these are the twofold effect. The first effect is that interest on drawings will be treated as an income. So that is why it will be showing on the credit side of the P and account. The second effect is that interest on drawings will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from capital. The next one is provision for doubtful debts. Provision for doubtful debts. So in accounting, there is one theory. The theory is called as theory of conservatism. As per theory of conservatism, we can always anticipate losses but not for profit. So that means we can always say there will be a chance of losses, 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 but not for profit. So we can't say there will be a chances of profit, but we can say chances of loss. And we used to prepare, we used to prepare it. Suppose we are anticipating that there will be a future loss. So we are, we are required to prepare it. For the anticipated for meeting the anticipated losses. So how can we prepare it uh, for anticipated losses? That is possible with the help of uh, creating provisions. All, all kinds of losses we can create uh, provisions not only for uh, see doubtful debts, we can create provision for all kinds of as per the a theory of conservatism, we can create provision for all kinds of uh, the probable losses. So general entry, how to create provision? So provision, whatever it may be, the provision we used, we used to create it by debiting the profit and the loss account. So the general entry will be profit and loss account debtor to provision for doubtful debts account. So always, whatever it may be the provision, see we used to create it by debiting the PL account. So general entry will be profit and loss account debtor to provision for doubtful debts account. And the twofold effect is that the first effect we can say provision for doubtful debt will be debited in PL account because we used to create any provision by debiting the PL account. So provision for doubtful debt we used to show on the debit side of the PNL account. The second effect is that provision for doubtful debt is just like bad debts. So the accounting treatment for provision for doubtful debt, it will be similar to bad debts. So it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from sundry debtors. So I, as I already mentioned that in balance sheet, we used to record only good debt. So whatever debt which are bad or doubtful, that will be deducted from total sundry debt is, and the net figure, we can say good debt, that will be showing on the output. Out. The debt will be divided into three, good, good debt, second one is bad debt, and in between these two, good debt means 100% sure that we are in a position to recover. Bad debt means 100% sure that we are unable to collect it. Or we can say that debt's already irrecoverable. But in between these two, good and bad, there is one type of debt, it is called as doubtful. 50% chance of uh, see collection and 50% chances of uh, see, uh, uh, see not in a position to collect or see debt irrecoverable, 
100 50% chance of recovery and another 50% chance we can say to recover so 50 50 so such a depths are called as uh, doubtful so always remember that whenever we, we prepare the balance sheet we used to show on the outer column we used to show center debt is only good debt only. so that is why see bad debt or doubtful debt is there closure for doubtful debt is there that will be detected from center debt is on the asset side of the balance sheet and outer column used to show only good debt so this is a twofold effect see closure for doubtful debt will be showing on the debit side of the pl account and second effect we can say see approaching for doubtful debt that will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from sundry debtors the next one is provision for discount on debtors provision for discount on debtors so this is the probable loss of discount to be allowed to the sundry debtors maybe a, see sundry debtors they may ask some discount or maybe we used to allow some discount that will be a loss to the business enterprise so for that purpose also we can create some provision the journal entry i told you in order to create any provision pl account will be debited the journal entry profit and loss account debtor to provision for discount on debtors the dual aspect the twofold effect is that first one provision for discount on debtors will be showing on the debit side of the profit and loss account the second effect is that it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from sundry debtors so this probable loss that will be created that will be so we are in a position to debit the pnl account because provision we can create only by debiting the pnl account so that is why provision for discount on debtors will be showing on the debit side of the pnl account the second effect is that only good debt will be showing on the outer column of the asset side of the balance sheet so that is why from sundry debtors in case any provision for discount on debtors are created that will be deducted and net figure will be showing on the outer column of asset side of the balance sheet so we can say provision for discount on debtors will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from sundry debtors so regarding debtors either it is bad debt or provision for uh, doubtful debt or provision for discount on debt is these three figures will be deducted from sundry debt is total debt is on the asset side of the balance sheet and net or we can say good debt that will be showing on outer column of the balance sheet the next one is reserve for discount on creditors this is just opposite to the provision for discount on debtors provision for discount on debtors we discussed this is a provision for a loss by way of discount allowed to the sundry debtors so the opposite direction we can say sometimes our company may receive some discount from creditors whenever we are making the payment early settlement of the claims of creditors the creditors may provide may allow some discount so that is called as reserve for discount on creditors the journal entry is reserve for discount on creditors account debtor to profit and loss account reserve for discount on debtors sorry reserve for discount on creditors account debtor to profit and the loss account so that means the profit and loss account whenever you are posting this journal entry into pnl account pnl account will be credited the two fold effect is that reserve for discount on creditors will be showing on the credit side of the profit and the loss account and just like the provision for discount on debtors reserve for discount on creditors will be deducted from creditors 
so always remember creditors are liabilities so that is why uh, see creditors we used to record on the liability side of the balance sheet we can say reserve for discount on creditors will be showing on the liability side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from sundry creditors so pro reserve for discount on creditors will be deducted from creditors on the liability side of the balance sheet and a net figure will be showing on outer column as creditors then next uh, common adjustment item we can say deferred revenue expenditure see part of such expenditure will be written off each year and the balance will be capitalized see normally revenue expenses or revenue expenditure we used to debit on the p and like on the full amount will be debited Uh, uh, the respective expense of each and every year will be debited on the PL account. But some cases, some expenditure, some revenue expenditure, which are abnormally large amount, and the benefit will be arising for the next few years. Not only this year it, uh, itself. Maybe we are expecting the benefit uh, the forthcoming years. Maybe two or three years. For example, advertisement. See that will be huge amount, and see the benefit will be coming for maybe uh, see uh, three or four years. So it is not justifiable that to charge the entire expense of uh, ex uh, see revenue expenditure like advertisement. See during the first year itself, whenever we are incurring the expense. So we have to carry we, what, what will be what we used to do. We used to charge a part of the total expenditure see, in first year, and the balance will be carried forward to the forthcoming year. And we used to charge a certain percentage every year to during the that uh, see expected period of benefit. That expenditures are called as a deferred revenue expense. That means we are deferring, we are postponing the. charging of expenditure revenue expenditure such expenditures are called as deferred revenue expenditure the general entry adjustment entry is profit and loss account debtor to deferred revenue expenditure profit and loss account debtor to deferred revenue expenditure the two fold effect is that first first effect deferred revenue expenditure will be showing on the debit side of the pnl account because this is an expense this is an expenditure for example advertisement preliminary expenses see these are some of the examples of deferred revenue expenditure so this is an expense so that is why it will be showing on the debit side of the pnl account always remember that how much portion of the total expenditure maybe 25% of the total expenditure maybe 50% maybe 20% of total expenditure so we used to charge every year so whatever portion we are charging that that amount that portion will be debited in the pnl account every year and the balance amount it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet the balance amount or we can say from the total amount minus whatever already a portion whatever already debited in pnl account that will be see showing on the asset side of the balance sheet so it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet by way of deduction from the capitalized amount see for example the advertisement the total expenditure is 5 lakhs and we are already charged 1 lakh 20 percentage see uh, during this year in pnl account so in balance sheet we used to show advertisement rupees 4 lakhs that means 5 lakhs advertisement 5 lakhs less expenditure already debited in pnl account 1 lakhs 5 lakhs minus 1 lakh so we used to show 4 lakhs on the asset side of the balance sheet just like a fictitious asset so this is not an asset fictitious assets means those assets which are actually not an assets at all but for some accounting treatment we used to we used to treat it as an as an asset such as assets are called as uh, fictitious assets so just like fictitious assets deferred revenue expenditure see whatever portions not 
a portion or not a charge that you'll be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. The next one is stock destroyed by fire. See, maybe some part of the stock or maybe full uh, store, whatever goods we stored in Godown, maybe destroyed by some abnormal reasons, uh, we can say fire. So whenever there is a fire in our Godown and goods destroyed by fire, so what will be the adjustment entry? So we have to discuss how to treat in PL account. So there are, see, three instances in the case of uh, stock destroyed by fire or we can broadly divide into two first one is stock is insured and second case is stock is not insured or uninsured stock insured again we can divide into two stock fully insured and second one is stock partly insured so we'll discuss with the first one in case stock is fully insured the general entry, we can say insurance company account debtor to trading account. So the general entry, insurance company, whatever amount. See, we can suppose it is fully insured, the insurance company will admit the full amount of our claim. So whatever amount admitted by the insurance company, that will be debited insurance company account debtor to trading account. The actual loss of goods that will be showing on the credit side of the trading account because in order to in order to uh, show in order to charge the actual material consumed whatever goods destroyed by fire that will be deducted just like closing stock we discussed material consumed is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. but in case of any abnormality like stock destroyed by fire that amount of stock destroyed by fire also will be detected to show the uh, the actual consumption of material. So that is why actual amount of stock destroyed by fire will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. In all cases, that is stock is insured or not insured, or stock is fully insured or partly insured, actual amount of stock destroyed by fire will be showing on the trading account credit side of the trading account to show the see, actual material consumption. The twofold defect is that, so stock destroyed by fire, it will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. This treatment will be same in all cases, whether it is fully insured or partly insured or not insured. The second defect is that in case the stock is fully insured, and the insurance company admitted the full claim that insurance claim will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet because it is an asset so that is why insurance claim will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. The, the twofold effect is that first one first effect see stock destroyed by fire will be showing on the credit side of the trading account the second effect whatever amount admitted by the insurance company that will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet because it is an asset. The second instance, stock destroyed by fire, in case stock is partly insured. That means, see our goods, whatever goods we are stored in our Godown, it is not fully insured. For example, we have 50 lakhs worth rupees, see goods in our Godown, but we insured only for 25 lakhs. That is partly insured. So what will be the journal entry? Adjustment entry. See that adjustment entry is that insurance company account debtor, profit and loss account debtor to trading. So always remember, suppose it is partly insured, the insurance company will admit a part of the claim only. Or the see, don't think that insurance company will admit our full claim of actual loss they will admit only proportionate the partial amount proportionate to the insured value for example suppose we have worth rupees 50 lakhs uh, goods in store and we insured only 25 lakhs that means 50 percentage is insured in case of any actual loss of uh, 5 lakhs you can expect an insurance claim of uh, half of uh, 
five lakhs only, that becomes a two point five lakhs. So insurance company, whatever amount admitted by the insurance company, it will be debited, and whatever portion of actual loss of goods not admitted by the insurance company, that will be treated as our actual loss, and it is debited in PNL account, and the total amount of goods destroyed that will be credited in trading account so these are the two fold effects the first effect is that the entire amount of stock destroyed or actual amount of stock destroyed by fire it will be showing on the credit side of the trading account the second effect uninsured portion of stock destroyed by fire that will be treated as actual loss and the actual loss will be debited in PLI. You can see uninsured portion will be shown on the debit side of the PL account because it is an actual loss. And insurance claim, whatever amount of see, claim admitted by the insurance company, that will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. So the entire amount that will be showing on the credit side of the trading account in order to show the actual material consumption. And See, if there is any uninsured portion, in case of partially insured, the uninsured portion will be treated as actual loss that will be debited in PL account. Because the insurance company will never admit the, the full claim, only partial claim only. And whatever act, uh, see insurance claim, whatever claim admitted by the insurance claim, that will be uh, treated as an asset and it will be showing on the asset side of the balance sheet. So, See, there are three effects will be here. Credit side of the trading account, the entire amount. Then whatever actual loss, uninsured portion will be debited in PL account. And admitted claim by the insurance community is an asset, asset side of the balance sheet. The last instance in case of stock destroyed by fire is in case stock is not insured. So it is very clear that suppose stock is not insured, there will be no insurance claim. So whatever amount, the entire amount or actual amount of loss, that will be treated as actual loss. So the general entry will be profit and loss account debtor to trading account. PL account debtor to trading account. There is no insurance claim because there is no insurance at all. The twofold effect is that first one remains the same only in all cases. The actual amount of loss that will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. The next one, the actual loss, there is no insurance claim. So whatever amount, actual loss, that will be showing on the debit side of the PL account. There is no question of insurance claim. So see, actual amount will be credited, actual amount of loss, stock destroyed by fire, that will be credited in trading account and actual amount will be debited in PL account. So these are the See, accounting treatment for stock destroyed by fire. The last item, common item in the adjustment, you can say goods distributed as free samples. Sometimes as a part of advertisement or as a part of promotion of our goods, some companies used to distribute goods as free samples. That is as a part of advertisement or as a part of uh, see, promoting their sales. So the adjustment entry is advertisement expenses account debtor to trading or purchase account. Advertisement account debtor to trading account or purchase account. That means goods distributor as free samples will be treated as advertisement. And it will be treated as advertisement expense. And uh, see, uh, trading account will be credited or purchases account will be credited. So we'll discuss what will be the twofold effect. The twofold effect is that goods distributed as free samples, it will be shown, it will be showing on the credit side of the trading account. This is, this is one treatment. Either goods distributed as free samples will be showing on the credit side of the trading account or goods distributed as free samples will be showing on the debit side of the trading account by way of deduction from purchases. 
either credit on the trading account or goods distributed as free samples will be deducted from purchases that means that much amount whatever goods distributed as free samples that results in the reduction of purchases so that is why purchases account will be deducted and the second effect is that it is treated as an expense sorry it is treated as advertisement expense so that is why see goods distributed as free samples will be showing on the debit side of the pnl account as advertisement expense so these are the treatment first one either showing on the credit side of the trading account or either credit side of the trading account or it will be showing on the debit side of the tra uh, trading account by a deduction from purchases so purchases will be deducted to the respective goods distributed as free samples on the debit side of the trading account either or we have to do either one treatment only either credit on the trading account or it will be deducted from purchases the second effect is that it is advertisement expense so that is why it will be showing on the debit side of the pnl account so these are the see uh, see uh, adjustments that we uh, that used to arise and we are required to see make some adjustments maybe in addition to this some other expenses will be there so, sorry some other items will be there so we are required to treat accordingly thank you for watching my channel please do not forget to subscribe our channel please click the bell icon near to the subscribe button you will get notification when we upload new videos thank you